Aloha everyone, it's Lynn with I Hula Hawaii, bringing the hula of Hawaii to you. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about another hula implement called the pu'ili, also known as the bamboo sticks. Now, in ancient Hawaii, the pu'ili was usually danced with a single pu'ili. The dancer would hold in its right hand the pu'ili and gesture hula motions with his or her left hand. Now, in more modern kahiko and awana hula, we use the pu'ili in pairs. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the pu'ili look like. Now, the pu'ili can be used in a noho hula, which is a sitting hula, or ilalo, which is a standing hula. Now, if you were to use one pu'ili, please note that it is much more challenging and difficult to use an implement in one hand and hula gestures with the other. The pu'ili is a standard size of about two feet long. Each pu'ili has a closed side of the bamboo here, which is your handle, and at the ends you have splinters. This is what makes the noise when you hit them together. Now the way that we hold our bamboo is we are going to use our thumb and our fingers to wrap around. Now you don't need to give a really strong grip, you just want to hold it firmly. And one of the things that the pu'ili is going to do, I'll try to get it in the video here, is it's going to be moving in your hand in the direction that you're playing. So it's going to go out and come back in your palm, like you're just holding on to the pu'ili handle, moving it out and in as you play it, and depending on the angle of the motion. So if we're just doing a simple pattern such as this, right, left, right, shoulders, left, right, left, shoulders, right, left, right, shoulders, left, right, left, shoulders. We're using our wrists to dictate the direction of our pu'ili. I also feel the pu'ili being released in my palms so that it allows my wrist to move as well. If we have a firm hit, we're not really releasing the pu'ili in our wrist, but as we go back to our shoulders, possibly a low to a high, we will be maneuvering the pu'ili using our wrist as well as our palms. One more tip, where do you actually place your hand on the handle to hold the pu'ili? So you don't want to hold it way at the bottom of the base and you don't want to hold it up close to the splinters. You just want to have a nice middle, both sides, and you want to be able to tap your bamboo not towards the base of it, but more towards the middle to the upper three-fourths level of your pu'ili to give that nice sound. Now I did mention that I have more than one set of pu'ili. I'd like to show you the differences in the sound. You might not recognize the size difference, but I'm going to give you a little explanation. So this is my widest handle of pu'ili that has the most splinters, 16. Here is the sound of this set of pu'ili. Here is a slightly smaller handle set. This is actually uh, my very first set of pu'ili I ever got when I started dancing hula at the age of four, and it has stood its test of time. So this bamboo does have a smaller width, this has 12 splinters. It sounds similar, but slightly different. So even though I bought this and used it as a child, this is still a pair of bamboo that I use in my everyday lessons. Let's take a look at a smaller size that a child might use. This set of bamboo is a child-sized bamboo. I actually purchased this for my youngest daughter when she was first learning how to dance hula. I actually never came across one so small, so I wanted to try it out and see if we would be able to mimic the same sound. This one has only eight splinters, um, but the purpose of her being able to hold it and learn how to use the pu'ili was the goal. So the sound wasn't that important to me because as she was learning the hula, um, she was learning to play the pu'ili in a group. So you weren't able to hear this being any different from others. It is a little bit of a softer sound of the pu'ili, and I believe that's just because these splinters are a little fatter and there are less cuts in them. Let's take a listen to these. So you notice how soft these are? It's 
still we have the same effect of learning how to use the pu'ili. So as I mentioned before, our pu'ili even here on the islands come from various places, the Philippines, Laos, and Taiwan. So you just want to make sure that you listen to your pu'ili and like the sound so that can be a part of your hula implements. Lastly, how do you care for your pu'ili? Now, if you were to go to hula class, you don't want to just walk into hula carrying a set of pu'ili. You would want to care for them by either having a fabric bag to put them in. There's many places that sell Hawaiian fabric bags with drawstrings, or you could even make your own. I actually have singular cases for each one. Now, if you didn't have sewing abilities or you didn't even have the capabilities of being able to purchase something like that, you could simply either use like a paper towel roll um, to put over it, or you could do something like this. You could simply just get a cardstock and roll it around, staple it and tape it, and that keeps your splinters together as you put it in your bag. I hope this has been a help to you in learning about the pu'ili. Mahalo for tuning in today with I Hula Hawaii. I hope that you have enjoyed learning about the pu'ili and have learned a little bit more about how we use hula implements in our hula. Please subscribe if you haven't already and give a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. And if you have a question that I can help you answer, please leave that below. I'm actually going to be doing a video at the end of this series answering the many questions. I've already gotten questions about the ipu and really want to be able to help you learn a little bit more. So if you do have a comment or a question, go ahead and leave that below. I look forward to seeing you next week with more hula from I Hula Hawaii. I have another hula implement to show you next week. Until we see each other again, ahui ho and aloha. Aloha.